Hi, my name is Seti and welcome back to the channel where we make educational technology easy for you. In today's video, we'll be looking at Microsoft Stream, how you can use it and why you might choose to do so. Let's dive into it with another flipped classroom tutorial. Now let's start by opening up our browser and navigate to that Office tab. Now let's go ahead and select Office and then here we can now find Stream. Now if you do not see Stream as one of these apps available, simply click on that plus icon and then you can find Stream. So I'm going to select Stream and this brings us to the Stream website. Now what is Microsoft Stream? Well Microsoft Stream is Microsoft's answer to video content. This is a great way to share your video content within your organization and give different people different permissions. So let's get started by having a look at some of the options within Microsoft Stream. Now at the top you'll see there is a home button here and then we have a discover and a content button. Now the discover button this is where you can find videos shared by other people within your organization or videos that you have access to. So when you click on discover you can see that you can either discover different videos channels, people or groups. Now I'm going to click on videos and then I get a nice list here of videos available to me. Now these are videos that have been shared and I have access to these videos. This could be because I am part of this organization or because I'm part of a group that has been given access. I can also go to my content and then this is where I control what is being shared. So here we can look at my videos. And as you can see, I don't have any videos uploaded at the moment, but we also have a number of additional tabs here. And these are the important tabs. We have groups, channels, meetings, a watch list, follow channels and a recycle bin. Now we're going to really focus on those groups and channels because it's important to understand how these work for you to really use Stream and utilize all the additional features that it has. Now groups, these are ways of sharing videos with people and also giving them certain permissions. Now, when you look at my groups, you can see that I have a number of groups here and these have been pulled in from Teams, but you can click on that, create a group and then create a, your very own group which we're going to do right now so let's go ahead and name this group stream fun group and this automatically creates an email address now we're going to give this a description the demo group for stream and then we can choose the access now here we can select if it's a public group or a private group we're going to keep it as a private group and now we can add some members so let's go ahead and add the teacher to this group we're going to add that teacher there Let's find teacher one and add him as a group member. Now here you can see that I have the owner ticked at the top and I'm going to leave the teacher as a simple member. I can now also tick this box to allow all members to contribute to this group. That means they can upload their own videos into my group. Let's go ahead and create that group. And there we go, it's saving it. And our group is now visible here. When I click on that group, I go into that group and what you will see is it has its own homepage. This means that there are specific highlights for different groups. Because you can have so many different groups, you can have all these different homepages and they're all feeding you different videos. Now, because this is empty at the moment and nothing has been uploaded, you're not seeing anything on this screen. So let's go ahead and create a channel now because the channels function in a very different way. When we go to my content and then select channels what we can do is we can create a new channel now what's different about a channel is that you're not going to give different permissions to different members this is a channel where you upload your content you can add content to it and then you can select the access for this channel so the channel is a way of organizing your content without changing any of the permissions so I'm going to call this channel a demo channel for stream and you flip and then we're going to leave this description blank. There we go. Now I can change this to a group channel or make it a company-wide channel. I'm going to leave it as a group channel and I'm going to share this with the Eduflip demo group. So we're going to share that with the demo class. Let's go ahead and create this channel. Now, as you can see here, there was no description, but when I click on the channel itself, it is also empty. So there is nothing in this channel at the moment. Now, as you start adding video content and uploading it to stream, you can start organizing your videos. You can change the permissions using those groups and you can organize your content in the channels. Now let's go ahead and create some content. So let's go ahead and click on that create button and let's upload a video. So we're going to click on upload and then here I can now drag and drop my files or I can click on browse. Now I'm going to go and find that file. I'm going to upload my most recent video on how to create a poll. 
And there we go, we're going to select the video language, English, and then we're going to save that. Now you can see the video file is being uploaded and as it uploads, you can start adding the title and the description. So let's go ahead and do that right now. How to create a poll in Microsoft Teams, a quick video on polls in Teams. There we go. Now, one thing I really like about Stream is that it allows you to bulk upload multiple files at once. So here at the top, you can see I can select more files to upload. That means you can start selecting all those video training that you have for your staff and you can upload everything at once. Now here we can either select a pre-selected thumbnail or we can go ahead and click on that plus icon and upload our very own thumbnail. So I'm going to do that right now. We're going to just select our thumbnail. There we go, we're going to upload that thumbnail and then we dive into the permissions. Now you'll recognize this from other video platforms, but the permissions is what is going to make streams so different from other video platforms. Here you can see we can either allow everyone in our company to view this video or we can untick that box and we can share it with a specific group. So here I can share it with a group or I can add it to a channel. Now I'm going to share it with my Eduflip group. So here we go, we're going to share it with the Eduflip demo class group. Now at the moment it is set to display that means that they can view the file and they can see all the information. I can also tick that owner box and if I do that then I allow all the members of that group to edit the information, change the description and also change the permissions of that video. So we're going to leave it as it is and then as we scroll down we have a number of additional options. So when we click on options we now can either turn those comments on or off and we can auto-generate the caption file. So we're going to leave all these as the default. Now, while we're waiting for this file to upload, let's go ahead and also add this to one of our channels. So here we can now also select channels under the share button, and we're going to choose that Eduflip demo channel. So let's go ahead and type in demo, and there it is, demo channel for stream. We're going to add that and you can see as it's added to the viewers tab here we do not have any permissions to change because channels work in a very different way. Now if this was a training video and you wanted it available to anyone in your organization and you want them to add it to their own groups and their own channels then you would tick that box here at the top and then this would allow anyone in your organization to use the video in their own groups and add it to their own channels. Now once the upload is finished, you'll see it starts processing at the top, but we can scroll down and go ahead and publish this video. So let's go ahead and click on publish. And here we go. We now automatically see our video down at the bottom. We have a number of different options. We see who's uploaded this video, when it was uploaded. We see it has limited access because it was shared with a group and within a channel. We also have those like buttons and we can add it to a watch list. In addition to that, we can share this video. So when I click on that share button here, I get three different ways of sharing this file. I can either share it and have a starting point and get this link. I can have an email sent and I can also embed it onto various platforms. What we're going to do is we are going to dive into these three dots right here and we are going to find some additional options. Now, once your video has been uploaded within this platform, you can trim your video. So you can see here that we can trim that video, we can replace the video, or we can update the video details. And that's what we're going to be doing right now. So let's go ahead and click on update video details. And you can see here we have those same menus we saw as we were uploading the video, and you can just change all the information right there. Click on cancel and return to that video view page. Now on the video view page, you'll notice that on the right hand side, there are two additional tabs. One is the transcript of this video. And then the second one is an interactivity tab. So here you can see we have the transcript and it does have some mistakes there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to dive in and we're going to just tweak it slightly. So when you click on this pencil icon there, what you can do is you can tweak all these. So we can now change the spellings used and we can add punctuation. Once that's done, we click on save and then that is added to the video. So this allows you to quickly go through that video transcript and change everything that has to be changed. When you go to the interactivity tab, you'll see that you can also add a form and this is great for adding additional information, maybe polling your viewers, or maybe getting some feedback on the video or on the content discussed in that video. And this is the first way of getting some content onto your stream channels and within your groups. Now, the second way that you can do this is by screen recording. 
Now, Microsoft Stream has made screen recording part of their basic offering. So what we're going to do now is we're going to demonstrate just how you can do this and how easy it is to use. So let's go back to that home page. And here you can now see that there is a video highlighted there because this was the latest video uploaded. But what we're going to do is go to create. Now, instead of uploading a video, I'm going to go to record screen. Now, recording my screen means that I'm going to have to give it some permission. So you'll have to give it permission to your microphone, give it permission to your video camera. The reason for that is because this allows you to create quick little tutorial videos that you can then share within your organization. And it's all at the touch of a button. Now you do get a little notification there at the top and it's just a reminder that you should always make sure you have the correct permissions and you don't just record other people without them knowing. So we're just going to read that here at the top. And now once you've done that, you can click on that X and that removes the banner. Now, before you start recording your screen, make sure you check your camera and audio settings. So here in the bottom left, you can select your camera. You can see here we have a number of different cameras. I'm going to select the forward facing camera. And then here we can select our microphone. So let's just leave it at the default. Once you're ready, you can click on that record button and you can start recording. Now, at the moment, Microsoft Stream limits the recording to 15 minutes, but you'll see a countdown for that as well. As soon as we click on record, you'll see that your camera appears in the bottom. Now here we have our camera view, but I can move this around and just change the position of that camera view. You can also pop it out and have it as a big screen. I have to select the application window that I want to record, or I can select my entire screen. I'm going to select the entire screen. There we go. And we're going to click on share. We get a little countdown and our video is being recorded. You can see here we are now on three seconds, five seconds out of the 15 minutes, and that's because you only get a maximum of 15 minutes. So now we can click on next, and then here we get our recording. Now let's say that we're not happy with this recording, well, we can just start over. So let's go ahead and click on record again. I'm going to delete this clip, and it starts over. The camera goes on, we can close that banner, and we can start recording again. We select our application, and click on share. Here we go. We now have our little demo video that we can use. We can show any of these screens and just demonstrate how everything works. And then once we're done, we're going to click on next. Now you don't have to automatically click on next. You can also pause the video, get everything set up and then continue the recording. However, the total time will be 15 minutes. I now have my video, so I'm going to go ahead and upload it to stream. You can preview it here. Here we go. We now have our little... There you go, that works. So let's go ahead and upload to stream. As it is uploading here on the right hand side, you'll see those settings again. So we call this screen recording demo one. I'm going to add a description demo of screen recording. Video language, allow everyone in the company to view this video. Well, we want to change those. But because we're uploading a screen recording, we get slightly different details or slightly different settings. And in order for us to get access to the full settings, we're going to have to click on this right here, update video details. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to click on video details. And this brings us to the main video details page. Here we can now change our permissions. We can either allow everyone in the company or again, select a single group. I'm going to share it again with my Edgeflip group. There we go, demo class and I'm going to share it just with that group. Once we're done, we're going to click on publish and our video is now live. You can see here we have our watch page. I'm going to press pause. The video has been uploaded. You can see it has limited access. It was uploaded by myself. You can also see some trending videos here. This was the other video that was uploaded and we can add some interactivity to this video. Now let's go back to my content. And let's have a look at our group. So here we have our different groups. And as you recall, we shared it with that Edge Flip demo class. So let's dive into that group. They now have a homepage with two videos because these are the two videos that were shared with them and they can see their own homepage. However, when I go into a different group, let's say that we go into the demo study group, they do not see any videos at all because I haven't shared that video with them. And this is what really sets stream apart from other video platforms. 
you can control who sees the videos and how much access they get. This is great for training videos and your videos for early years might be very different from your middle school training videos or upper school. So this allows you to create those different groups and share those videos with them without uploading so much content that it gets overwhelming for the other staff. Now, if you want to learn more about how you can use this within Microsoft Teams, I've got an entire playlist on Microsoft Teams, or you can watch the suggested video down below. In the meantime, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.